Hi guys and welcome to today's video on phew, defining tangent. It's weird. I've literally just looked at that and had to look down again. Do you think I could remember this stuff? I'm old. I'm 147 years of age. I know. I look good for my age, please. No, no, no comments. It's weird. Um, well, actually, what I'm going to ask you to do is, yeah, make some comments, show some love, or more importantly, subscribe to my channel by clicking that little doohickey over there. It feels weird. I'm pleading for subscribers, but you know, 3.2 million people watch food videos. I, I don't get it. I, I don't. I, I, I could sit here and eat a Carmen's bar if you like. In fact, I could tuck into a full-on KFC. I'm happy. I give it a go. I can dribble while doing maths. It wouldn't be attractive. And yet, who wants to watch maths videos other than seven people in Hull? Hey, Hull! How are ya? If you can subscribe, it really does mean the world to me. And it's just a little click of that button. And you get told of new videos. I also have a website, but there's too much about that. Today, we are going to look at defining tangent. It's going to be a relatively short video. In fact, I probably talk more about myself than I have about tangent. But in a previous video, and I've done two of them so far on circular functions, so this is the third video, we've looked at the sine and cosine. We've looked at the unit circle. If you haven't seen them, my advice is to go back and watch them. They're, they're going to scaffold all of the work we're coming on to. Now, I've said here recap. It looks like I've just sort of stopped, but I'm going to recap some year nine stuff and then I'll sort of link it together in just a moment. Uh, I want to go back to this thing here, which is a right angle triangle. And we knew for right angle triangles that if I were given theta, the chances are it was going to ask me to use trigonometry to find side lengths or, or angles or something along those lines. And, and trigonometry had this thing called Sokotoa. Or as my math teacher said, silly old Harry, caught a herring trawling off America. I know, Sokotoa, who'd have thought it was shorter? He was a sadist. Whole new discussion. So in our previous video, we looked at the idea that for a unit circle, if we had a general point which had the coordinate x, y, and that had a radius of 1, then we could suggest that our angle here horizontally had a distance of cosine theta and vertically had a distance of sine theta. That's specific to the unit circle, but is used in, in a lot of stuff coming up. And if you're a bit confused about that, that said, I could use the idea that if I wanted to find the sine of zero degrees, I could draw my unit circle. I could mark a line in that unit circle that is zero degrees. Now, again, we actually do things uh, from the zero degrees is from there. That's 90 degrees. That's 180 degrees. That's 270. And that is 360. And I promise you at some point I'll start using radians. But I think at the moment degrees sort of helps for the unit circle. So now we know that we're looking for the sine of an angle. And we know that the sine is given by the vertical height of that line. Well, bearing in mind this is 0, that is 1, and that is minus 1. What is the vertical height that line gets to? Well, as it turns out, it is 0. So I now know the sine of zero degrees is zero. And in the same way, the cosine of zero degrees is, well, cosine we know is a horizontal distance. How long is that line? Does it have a horizontal length? Well, I should cocoa because using, again, my Cartesian information, that has a length of one. So the cosine of zero is one. Now, there are other ways of doing this we could have used. Um, what could we have used? We could have used... Oh, the diagrams, those calculator ones I did. And again, you've got no idea what I'm talking about. Your calculator can draw some funky graphs, trust me. So that was sine dealt with, and that was cosine dealt with. But what about tan? Right, let's go back and let's see what happens with tan. So we know that sine of theta was equal to, what was it, uh, opposite silly old Harry. So hype, we know that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent divided by my hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to say tan of theta, we knew was opposite over adjacent, yes? Now, watch what happens when I do sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. Now, I could write this revoltingly as op on hype divided by adj on hype. And the awesome people with fractions will go, oh, yeah, that's easy. But I'm going to do it sort of the long hand. I'm going to do opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, we can't divide fractions, but what we can do is Kentucky chicken that's fried. You've got no idea what I'm talking about. Well, Kentucky fried chicken's already taken, and I'm going to start a fast food restaurant because I've got a brand new recipe with lots of... But I don't really. <sighs> Think about it. Uh, Kentucky chicken that's fried. Keep, change, flip. Yes, so I'm going to keep... The opposite divided by the hypotenuse. 
I'm going to times and I'm going to do hypotenuse divided by adjacent. They cancel. And so I know that sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to the opposite divide. Hold on a moment. Stop the horses. I know what that is. Opposite divided by adjacent is tan theta. And the one of the most important identities in mathematics, and in fact there's lots of them, but this is pretty important, is that tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. Please, please, please learn that. It is so, so important. And you're going to say, well, all right then, so what has that got to do with the don't say price of fish? Please don't say price of fish. I've got no idea where that expression comes from. It, no, nothing to do with price of fish. I want to go back and say, well, if I know that tan theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta, if I wanted to find the tan of zero degrees, then I could just do the sine of zero divided by the cosine of zero. Hold on a moment, we've already worked that out, haven't we? Yes, here is my unit circle, bang, bang. Here is zero degrees. Uh, the sine of zero was equal to, sine was vertical height, there was no vertical height. And the cosine of zero was equal to uh, horizontal height, which is one. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the tan of zero degrees was the value of sine theta, which is zero, divided by one, which just so happens to be zero. So tan theta is zero. This, this stuff is freaking awesome. What about if I wanted to find the tan of 90 degrees? Well, what do I do? I do the sine of 90 divided by the cosine of 90 degrees. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. Draw a circle. Yes, there's my unit circle. Move it up again. Uh, ooh, itchy head. Uh, right, 90 degrees is here. Yep, I know that that's got a height of 1. So the sine of 90 degrees, sine is vertical height, vertical height is 1. Yep, the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0 because it's got no horizontal. So the tan of 90 degrees is 1 divided by 0, which is, oh, hold on a moment, undefined. That's a bit weird, undefined. How can I divide this number by 0? Well, as I've done in my previous videos, we've done the graphs of sine, we've done the graph of cos. Do you want to have a look at tan? I know you do. Right, okay, so here we go. So, loading up my CAS calculator, you'll see that I already have cos x in there from a previous lesson that I did. So, I'm going to delete the value of cosine x. I'm going to load up my keyboard and trig and do tan and there. And I'm going to say to my calculator, no, let's get rid of that bracket. And would you do me the honor of sketching that graph? And lo and behold, what do we end up with? We end up with, wow, that is well funky. And I'm loving the fact it's annotating, but there is rather a lot on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom in on just a section of this. And we are looking for the value of 90 degrees. Remember, we looked for tan of 90. So if I look at my calculator, I have now highlighted the tan of 90. I've located where that degree says 90 degrees. And what do you notice? Well, actually, the graph seems to kink and then get closer and closer to 90 degrees, but never, ever, ever touches it. And as such, what do we know that's called? Well, if we just draw this graph here like this, here is my 90 degrees, and the reason that I've drawn a dotted line is because it is an asymptote. There is no value defined for 90 degrees, pretty much because the cosine of 90 is 0, and we can't divide by 0. But tan graphs are flipping awesome. I love them, literally love them, because they do this and this and this. Now, while there is an asymptote at 90 degrees, which I've just put, you'll also notice there's an asymptote at minus 90 degrees. And if we were to bring our calculator back and look at how often that graph repeats, it's also important. Do you remember back to the previous video where we said the sine graph and the cosine graph repeated every 360 degrees or 2 pi, which was the same? Well, the tan graph actually repeats every 180 degrees or pi in radians. That's actually really, really important. It crosses through the point 0, 0, and then repeats every single 180 degrees. So the next time it crosses through would be 180 degrees. The point it crosses through after that would be uh, 360 degrees, and so it goes on, which would suggest there would be another asymptote at 
270 degrees. Now my advice to you is load up desmos.com, play with the sine, the uh, cosine, and the tangent graphs. Try and change some numbers. So for example, see what happens when you do sine of two theta. See what actually happens when you have the two sine of theta. See what these values do, because I can guarantee you at some point later in these video series, and in fact later courses, the twos that are there, threes, values along these lines are actually going to make a significant difference to your understanding. If you get, if you understand what happens, you are gonna just ace this course. Well, nice short one today. Defining tangent isn't particularly complicated. It's basically just that tan of theta is sine theta divided by cos theta. And the way we need to do that is find the sine of the value and the cosine of the value and divide them together. And sometimes it's not defined. And we had a little bit of a look at the tan graph. Now it is as ever awesome seeing you. Thank you very much. Hopefully you did at the start of this, click that little doohickey. Hopefully you've paused the video somewhere. You've sent an email out to your friends. You've put it on Facebook and gone, yo guys, this this, this maths guy actually makes sense. He's, yeah, it's a little bit weird, but he sort of makes sense. Um, and hopefully that will sort of lead to a few more subscribers. Um, again, so needy, but really Really, really greatly appreciated if you could um i'm done all right so you haven't subscribed here's one more chance there's that subscribe button hit it if not this time maybe next time no well there's a video over there coming up that is of the same sort of ilk same year level that hopefully you will enjoy as well this is it this has been fun this is the mass guru signing off see you next time